my young peeps. Uh, happy spring. It's finally here. And you may have seen little squirrels and little bunnies running around everywhere. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys some spring crafts to celebrate the new season. Um, today especially focusing on some bunnies. So the first craft I'm going to teach you is how to make cute little bunnies out of old socks. If you don't have um, an old sock you're willing to sacrifice to the sake of crafts today, feel free to just fast forward this video. I will also be teaching you guys how to doodle a tiny little bunny. Uh, it's a very easy doodle. And then also how to fold little origami bunny cups. All right, so if you don't have the materials for this first one, fear not, just fast forward. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna need to make this cute little bunny is an old sock that you're willing to sacrifice. Make sure you don't go taking your parents' socks without asking them first, but here I have a sock that I am allowed to cut up. It's old, we can't find its mate. Um, so first thing you're gonna do here, you're gonna fill this sock with something. So if you have stuffing, like I like making crafts, so I have some stuffing here, that's what I'm gonna use. But you can also use um, crumpled up paper towels, cotton balls, other old socks if you have that many. Um, some crumpled up paper. You can use anything to fill these, really. I just like stuffing because it's nice and soft, and then you can cuddle up with your little stuffed animal when you're done. But whatever you have, so you're just gonna take it and stuff this sock full, like that. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. All right, so you wanna fill it up so that you have just this little bit of room at the top and the rest has a little bit of squish to it. So. You can crumple up some paper and stuff it in there and you should get a very similar effect uh, looks wise when you're done. All right, so once you have this, your stuffed sock, you are going to need some rubber bands or hair ties. So I have some rubber bands right here. Pretty much any shape or size will do. So I have this rubber band here and this is what I'm gonna use, but you can use a hair tie, anything like that. As long as it's stretchy, you can even use a piece of string to tie it off. So I'm going to See up here where all of this slack is? I'm gonna push that stuffing down a little bit more. Grab that slack up here. This is gonna make the ears. Um, and you're just going to tie this section off. So I'm going to put the rubber band around it. Like so. Um, and if you have a piece of string that you're using, just wrap it around and tie a really strong knot right there. So you should end up with this kind of odd looking lump of sock with a little little tuft sticking out on top. Okay, um, the next step, once again, you can use another rubber band, a hair tie, or string. You can see on this one, I used a rubber band and then I tied a pretty little ribbon around to make a necklace, <laughs> a little scarf there. So you can use anything of that sort. I'm going to be using another rubber band on this one. and we are going to loosely pinch this part off right here to make a head. So I'm going to put this rubber band around and I generally like to leave more space down here than on the head so that the body's bigger. I would say a good rule of thumb is about two thirds, one, two body and then one third head. But whatever you like, it's up to you. That's a creative decision. <laughs> So I'm going to put my rubber band around here twice to make a nice defined little head. All right, so I'll give you guys a second to get caught up. Make sure that your rabbit-to-be looks like this. <laughs> All right, awesome. The next step, you are going to take a pair of scissors. Yes, safety scissors do work. Be careful when using your scissors, we don't want anyone getting hurt, so just use them with caution. And we are going to cut right down the middle of this sticky uppy portion to make two separate ears. So you can see here. So I'm going to take, and sometimes um, if the sock's hard to cut at all, if you just stretch it out while cutting, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to stretch it and cut it, and your ears don't have to be perfectly even of course. So I cut it there, and then the way that mine's folded, I just have to cut a little on the other side too. All right, so here are my two ears. And if you would like to, 
you can take another rubber band. You don't have to do this part, but um, you can take another rubber band and kind of pinch those two ears down like that. But you're just gonna wanna mess with these, tug on them a little, you can cut them more to make two perfect ear shapes sticking out on top. So I like my ears to look like this, so I'm just gonna stick another rubber band on to hold them in place. But as I said before, this part's really up to how you like it. Do whatever makes you happy. Alrighty. All right, next step, you're going to use a marker. I have some Sharpies here with me, uh, but any sort of marker will do. I like to start with a black marker and draw on the face. You can see I drew a little face right here. So draw whatever expression you'd like, but um, if you're not really sure how to start, um, I would draw, I find closed eyes the easiest, so just two little arches, one right there, and then another one right there. Two little arches for closed eyes. And then I'm going to do a pink nose. So for my black marker, I'm just going to do this smile. So you're going to start in the middle point here, move out to an arch, and then start at that same middle point and go the other way. So kind of like you're drawing an anchor, you're going to go swoop and swoop. Then I'm going to switch to my pink marker for a pink little nose and I'm just gonna draw a triangle right at the top of that black line. So I'm going to doodle in a pink marker. Like that. And um, I haven't tried them, but I think washable markers and stuff will give you pretty similar results to the Sharpies if you don't have a Sharpie on you. Next thing I like to do with the markers is I like to color the inside of the ear right here pink. You can see I did it on this one. Uh, it just gives it a little bit more flair. So I'm going to take a second and color in these middle of these ears pink. This takes just a second because it's a lot of area to cover. <laughs> so I'm just kind of doing a rough job. Of course, it's not that neat, but you can see the little pink inside of the ears. And then uh, I colored the belly pink on this one. You can use any color to color the belly, but it just adds a little bit more definition to the body. So I like to make a big semicircle here on the belly and then fill it in. So I'm just gonna kind of scribble in here to give it some color. Like that. Now, of course, I filled this one in a little bit better. A uh, pink highlighter might also work to fill that gap in. And I forgot to mention earlier, um, you can use either side of the sock. On this one, if you turn it inside out, you can see it gives it a fluffier texture. This one's the outside of the sock. So whichever you prefer. I did the fluffy texture on my first one, um, so it had fur like a real rabbit. All right, so you can stop here if you'd like, or if you have a couple other things lying around your house. I like to get a little fancier with them. so. Um, I have some little lacy ribbon here, and it, you can use any type of string for this. If you use regular string, you might want to fold it in half a few times so that you get it nice and thick. So I'm just going to take a piece of this, and I'm going to tie it right around the neck here to cover up my rubber bands. You don't have to do this, of course, but I think it gives a little cute scarf. Um, so I'm going to just tie this in a bow right here in the front and you cut off the extra. And if you want to name your pet rabbit here, you can also put a little piece of paper. You can tie a little paper tag on there and put your name on just like you would put a collar on a dog. So just tying my bow here. All right, so I just tied my bow right there and I'm gonna use my scissors and cut off the extra ribbon. So there's my little scarf and um, if you'd like to you can see I did it over here. You can also give your bunny a fancy little hairdo and put a piece of ribbon or some string right up here as well. Or you can make like a, cr a paper crown, anything you want to decorate the bunny. 
And if you have cotton balls lying around your house, I like to make this a little cotton-tailed bunny. So you can take a cotton ball, like this I have here, and if you just put a dab of glue right here on the tissue and stick that on there and leave it, you have to be a little patient for the glue to dry, but then you could end up having a cotton-tailed bunny like this. Now, these bunnies make super cute decorations for springtime. They're also great to cuddle with um, and just fun to make in general. Thank you so much for watching this craft, and I'm going to move on to the next one, how to doodle an easy bunny. Next stop, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to doodle a cute, quick little bunny like this. All right, so we're going to start off making that front of the face and the first ear. So you're going to draw a swoosh like that. And then we're going to make the chubby little bunny body. So you're going to take from the bottom of that ear, make a big curve to the back of the bunny. Next up, we're going to draw a squiggly circle here for his cotton tail. Okay, now it's time for the back leg. So you're going to draw a semicircle right there. And then from the bottom of that semicircle, you're going to draw this foot and connect it back over here to the tail. Then we're going to go back over here to the face. And right where we left off on the face, we're just going to curl that under. You can choose how pointy you want to make this little bunny face. So we're going to make his chin, just like that. And onto the front paws. So starting from the bottom of this chin, we're going to draw a front paw just like we did the back paw and connect that up here to the back leg. And then just draw another little hump right there and that'll make the paw on the other side. Now going up to this ear, draw a little hump right behind it and that makes the second ear and now it's just time for the details you have the outline now so we're gonna color in the inside of the ear here to make the pink part of the ear you can use different colors I'm just using the one pen but um, whatever color floats your boat I like to draw on a little face so you can do a little triangular nose maybe a bunny smile you can do the closed eye like we just drew on the um, stuffed animal, or I like to do a little open eye, so you start like that. Then you draw a circle inside, and fill in the pupil. And last but not least, every bunny has to have some whiskers, so you can just do some quick whiskers there. And there you go! Now he's ready for some fur decorations and, of course, a name. You can't leave him without a name. All right. On to the next craft. And last but not least, I'm going to teach you how to make some origami little spring flowers. Uh, say probably they're lilies. Um, so they're going to look just like this when we're finished. So first you need a square piece of paper. If you are using a regular sheet of paper, like a lined notebook paper, you can get a square by folding a triangle and then just cutting off the extra. So I'm going to start with a piece of square origami paper, just like this. Alrighty, so first step, you are going to fold along this diagonal to make a triangle shape. So you're going to fold it like this. And pinch, 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 pinch. And then crease that fold like that, okay? So you have a triangle, and you're going to open that triangle up. And then we're going to fold it across that other diagonal to make a triangle the other way. Like this. So when you open it up, you should have two diagonal lines going across your paper like that. Okay, now we're going to flip it over to this side, and you are going to fold it like a book. So we're going to fold it across this line here that you have a rectangle. Okay, open it up. And then finally this fold right here to make the other rectangle. Okay, so your paper should look something like this. 
So now we are going to collapse it along these folds like so until you have a square just like this. Okay, kind of press that down. Right, this next step is where it gets just a little tricky, but hang in there. I'm sure you guys can get through this. So see this side where it's all open? We are going to make that side face down just to keep track. So this top part is the point and the bottom has all these little flaps. Okay, so we are going to take this and fold it like a kite. So just this top layer, fold it so this line matches up with that crease right in the middle there. So I'm going to fold so you can see it just like that. Okay. And then you're going to do this other side to match up with it like that. So you should have a little kite looking shape right there. We're going to do the same thing on this other side. And on this side you can kind of use that fold you already have as a guide. Okay. Now we're going to open that up. You're going to peel this first layer back. And this is where it's a little tricky. You're going to kind of collapse that fold you just made, so fold it in here. Just gently pull this up, fold it in here, and just kind of gently flatten it down along those creases you have already made. So you have a big kite. Now we're going to flip it over to this side and do the exact same thing. Now the way I'm doing it on mine, the pattern is not going to be on the outside. I know a lot of you guys are going to be using notebook paper, so it won't have any pattern at all. But if you are using origami paper and you want the pattern to show, you just have to start on the other side. It's a bit of a gamble sometimes if you can't remember which side to start on. But um, if you do it on the white side, what's nice is you can color it and decorate it as you see fit. Okay, so now we have this little shape here on both sides. Now we are going to fold these flaps down. So you're going to fold that down like this and on the other side. So you have another kite shape, just like this. Okay. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down just so you can see this a little better. I'm going to take this point here and fold it to that middle crease. So just take this and kind of stick it. And this part doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to make your petals look skinnier. So you're gonna fold that in there and do the same thing right here. Fold it in to meet this one. Okay, so your paper should be looking like this. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Fold it in and fold it in. And this last part is my favorite part personally. You're going to take a pencil, pen, or in my case, I'm going to use a Sharpie because that's what I have lying around here, but the skinnier it is, so if you use a pencil, the tighter your curls, um, the curls will be on your petals. So you're gonna take this and see this first flap right here? This first little point on the triangle? You're going to roll it, roll it, like that. I like to hold it for a second and then slide the utensil out and let go and you can see it'll stay curled just like a petal. You're gonna do the same thing on this other side. Pinch it around your utensil and curl it, curl it. Pinch it for a second and slide your utensil out. So now you have two of your petals done. So for these other two, we're gonna kind of open this up and Roll it just like you did with the first two. Hold it for a second. Slide the utensil out. And on this last side, open it up. Put this on here. Roll the petal. Slide this out and let go. Now you can see that as we've been doing this, some of the first ones might unfold. That's normal. You just have to rewrap them, and once you do this a few times, once you curl those petals a few times, then they'll start staying. So I'm just going to recurl these two. And if you do it with a pencil or a skinny pen, 
they'll stay a little bit better than with the wide Sharpie. And there you have it, there's your flower. Just like that. And like you can see, um, if you do it with a colored piece of paper with the pattern on the outside, this is an example of what it might look like. Um, I like to take a little bit of perfume or uh, scented room spray or something and spray the middle of the flower so that you can smell it just like a real flower. <laughs> uh, if you guys are interested in more origami instructions, you can always take a look online for just easy orig origami instructions and try to follow along. That way you can make things like this little basket to put your flowers in. Oops. Happy spring, and I hope to see you guys back next week. Bye!